Do 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 what? What is going on under here? Am I leaking oil all over the place? Do I have an oil leak? Well, no. Actually, what's going on is not that I'm leaking oil, so I'm not gonna spend any time searching for an oil leak that doesn't happen, or that doesn't happen to be there. What I have is a problem with my pet cock. This is the pet cock right here. It's the valve that uh, releases the gas from the gas tank into your carburetors. And when they get old, they will tend to leak a little bit through the hose when they're not supposed to. And what that happens is it will drip, drip, drip into my carburetors and they'll overflow and drip, drip into one of my cylinders here. And uh, that is going to filter down through my rings and into my, uh, my crank down here and into the sump where the oil is kept. That's going to overflow and it's going to spill out creating this oily gassy mixture. You can tell it's a mixture of gas and oil and not an oil leak just by going like this and sniffing it. Yeah, definitely gassy. So, this is a problem for a number of reasons. First off, on this bike, which is a 93 Virago 750, um, it's only leaking into one of the cylinders, and so um, you get like a, this, like almost like a puddle of gas in there, and when I start it up, it fouls out these plugs like that. Um, so I'll get one plug that, uh, that fouls out pretty regularly. Uh, another problem is it will actually dilute my oil and make it really thin, and so um, my oil won't, uh, won't lubricate the cylinders and the pistons like it should, and uh, that can wear out my engine really, really quick. And so what I gotta do is I gotta fix this. Now, this is a vacuum actuated petcock, which means that vacuum comes from this little hose right here, opens this valve, and lets the fuel in, and uh, in theory, it's only supposed to do that when a uh, vacuum is being supplied by the engine. Um, therefore, gas is only flowing when the engine is running, except if it's in prime. But right now it's in on and it's still flowing and that's where the problem comes. Uh, that's where the problem comes from. It should be closed. So, what you could do to fix this is buy a uh, Petcock rebuild kit, but I don't want to do that. And so, this video is going to be about how to restore your uh, Petcock without buying a rebuild kit. So let's see what we can do. First thing we're going to do is we're going to take off the seat and take off the tank. Now with the tank off, you can see it doing a little drip, drip, drip every now and again. And it doesn't look like much, but that's definitely enough to fill up your, uh, your, your crank with, uh, with gas and to cause this kind of problem, especially if you leave it overnight. And, uh, this petcock doesn't even have an off setting, like some older ones do. It uh, just has the reservoir on and prime, and so it's there's nothing we can do about it before replace or before fixing it, like we're going to do right now. So first thing we're going to do is turn it over and take it off the tank. Um, and it's got these two screws here. We're going to take it off. And I'm just going to leave the tank up like here and so I don't have to drain it. I'm just sort of going to balance it up like that and leave the gas in it. Make sure also that gas isn't coming out your cap there. And no, it's not. So I'm just going to balance it up like this and take off my pet cock. All right, now, here's my pet cock. And there are three things that I can do for free right now to restore this thing without, uh, without buying any parts. And so going to do all three of those things now and show you how to do them. Um, and these uh, procedures will fix a variety of problems if you have gas coming out here, out your faceplate here, or if you have your pet cock is not, is not flowing well, um, if you're getting fuel starvation, then uh, these fixes are, um, are going to address those problems as well. And so what I'm going to do first is take off this faceplate. you got two simple screws right here. I'm just going to unscrew them and uh, open it on up. All right, now this half of the petcock is uh, comprised of a couple of really simple parts. First off, you have your faceplate here. You have this valve. And you have what looks like in there to be a really gnarly rubber gasket-y thing. Um, 
Some pet cocks also have this, which is sort of like a thin little washer, and it's sort of like a pressure, a pressure washer, which, uh, which would typically sit right here. And uh, its function is, is to provide a little bit of spring-loaded pressure for this valve part to squish onto the rubber right here. Now, that did not come from, that motor, from this motorcycle. What the Viragos have is on the faceplate, actually. You see that bent out part right there? That provides the pressure. And so what I actually already did was I pushed these, um, these sort of tangs right here. I pushed them out just a little bit to provide a little bit more pressure. Because after a while, they'll get pushed back and they won't provide as much pressure and you can get leakage out of here and whatnot. So that's the very first thing you can do. You can either, if your bike has one of these, you can either bend it back into its original shape so it's sort of like wavy like this. That's what you want. Or if you've got a Virago, um, you can bend those two parts of the tongs back. And so that's the first thing you can do. The second thing <coughs> is you can take out this rubber gasket thing. which this one, it looks pretty tore up, but I think I might actually still be able to salvage it because if you look, you really only need this rubber gasket part for uh, three out of these five holes because these two parts, it doesn't matter if it makes a seal because there's no gas flowing out there. So you only need the lower three. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find the two best holes, which are probably gonna be these two right here, going to clean them up a little bit with my razor, going to clean out the center hole, stick it back in there, and uh, try and make it function. Uh, after a while, these things get tore up like this, they get squished down, and so they start to leak. I've heard of some guys uh, soaking them in kerosene to sort of poof them back up a little bit. Um, I don't know, I've actually made them before. Um, I was on a cross-country trip and I made one out of an uh, inner tube. I just cut it out real carefully and made it, and uh, it was a perfectly good repair, and it's actually still running on that bike right now, uh, a couple years later. But um, if you want to buy it, I mean, that's up to you. I'm trying to do this repair without any kind of uh, um, any kind of an investment, and so what I am going to do is just sort of cut away these little parts here, open up this center part, and uh, then reinstall it. And so. I'll show you my finished product in a minute. All right, so here we go. It is by no means beautiful, but you can see on that uh, six o'clock and the nine o'clock hole, they're absolutely clear, and the middle hole is pretty clear too. And so with the extra pressure from this pressure plate, pushing this, uh, this valve, this dial valve or whatever it is, down onto here. Hopefully it's going to make a good seal. And so that's the second thing you can do to revitalize your pet cock. You can um, just sort of take a razor blade or whatever and uh, either cut away or push away the squished and, uh, and corroding rubber to, uh, to free up those passageways and hopefully cause no more leaks. Alright, so the next thing you can do here is uh, flip your pet cock over and take off this uh, this back this backing plate on the vacuum um, part of it. So just unscrew those, take it off. Be really careful not to break any of these gaskets here because this uh, there's two really really super fragile gaskets. So I'll take out all my screws and this is how this works. This is sort of like a little seal and um, what happens is this uh, this will seal off this gas passageway here so that gas can't flow unless vacuum is applied to this little nipple here and then it will just sort of pop in like that. See how it... I'll try and show you on this angle. See how it goes like that? It'll pop in. Now what might be happening is there's a little spring, a little return spring in here somewhere I can pop this part of it off without damaging the seal. See now, if I damage this gasket, then I probably am going to have to buy a rebuild kit. That's the goal of this video, is not to do that. So, I'm going to pull this away. Alright. 
So we got that middle part. And that's away. And now I gotta unseal this right here. Very gently. What I'm trying to do is access the spring in here because I suspect that maybe the spring has lost some of its springiness. Yeah, here's the spring. Now, the spring is what holds this thing closed and it's overcome by the vacuum of the engine. But I'm suspecting that this spring here, which is just this tiny little brass spring or what have you, is uh, it's not doing its job as well as it used to. So what I'm going to do just sort of very gently. First off, I'm going to see how long it is when it's at rest. So, just going to hold. Well, I'm going to find something to. Here we go. Alright, here's my razor blade, and it's just beyond this little rust mark here. And so I know that's, that's that. Very scientific method there. Just going to bend you out just a little bit. Okay. Need just a little bit more. Okay. Oh. And then I'm going to compare it. Oh yeah, that's a little bit longer. Okay. Maybe just a smidge, 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 smidge. Alright, perfect. Okay. So then I'm going to reassemble everything. And what this, what I just did was, I'm going to provide a little bit more pressure on this, uh, on, on, uh, this valve closer here, right here. So it's going to go a little bit deeper into here and hopefully it's going to make a good seal this time. Now would be a pretty good time to clean up anything in here. Typically here is where you get a lot of corrosion and a lot of junk. Um, but uh, this one looks pretty good actually. Uh, it's actually very clean in here. So that's why I think it's not really a corrosion issue. It's more of just like a, uh, like a mechanical issue like this spring. So actually feel a little bit better if I just pull it just a little bit more. All right, perfect, perfect. Everything is perfect. All right, so now I'm going to reassemble everything. You want to be sure that you got everything reassembled and that it's all nice and tight and screwed in tightly because if you have any vacuum leaks in here, then uh, you're going to have major gas leakage out here and um, your uh, this valve isn't going to open when the engine turns on. So it's going to be a big problem. So just be sure you take real good care of those thin little gaskets in there and uh, you screw everything down properly. All right, now there you go. You can see that I am no longer dripping. And uh, so this repair did its job. What I'm going to do actually now to make sure that I didn't overextend the spring is come, I'm going to stick a, uh, <clears throat> I'm going to stick a, um, a hose on here and suck it with my mouth to open up that vacuum valve and hopefully uh, gas should come out here. So um, if it does, I know we're good to go. All right, and last thing you're going to want to be sure to do is change your oil because it's all contaminated with gas. Um, but once you do that, you ought to be set. Now, is this repair better in any way than uh, just putting some brand new parts on? Well, I mean, you know, no. Obviously, new parts are always going to be better than, uh, you know, used old revitalized crappy parts, you know. But what if you're like halfway across the country on a cross-country trip and your petcock starts leaking, fouling out your plugs every single day? Or what if, um, you know, bike band, it says, yeah, it'll take four to six weeks to get those parts and you want to ride your bike around in the meantime? Or what if you're just a cheapo like I am? Well, you know, now uh, you know how to do it, and uh, that's the way to get the most life and uh, most utility out of, um, out of your parts. So if you all have any questions about this process, let me know.